All right, guys, so in this example here, we're working with refrigerant 134A, also known as R134A, flowing through a horizontal pipe or a tube, and that tube is going to have an internal diameter of 0 0.05 meters. Um, and then we're going to have the refrigerant enter the tube with a quality of 0 0.1, so we know we're in that two-phase mixture with a quality closer to a saturated liquid than a saturated vapor. We have the temperature at the inlet of 36 degrees Celsius, the velocity at the inlet of 10 meters per second, and then we have the exit uh, pressure at 9 bar as well as the quality as being x equals 1.0 as a saturated liquid. We're looking for the mass flow rate in kilograms per second, the velocity in meters per second at the exit, and then we're also looking for the heat transfer in kilowatts between the R134A and the surroundings, and we're going to look for the direction as to whether it is heat transferring from the R134A to the surroundings or the surroundings to the R134A. So we'll begin by drawing our schematic, and we'll have an inlet here on the left side, and we'll have the exit here on the right side. So we'll call this area 1 and this area 2, and of course we're going to have R134A flowing into the inlet. So now let's just write down what we're given here. So we have the diameter at the inlet, which is also equal to the diameter at the exit, is equal to 0 0.05 meters. We have the quality at the inlet, x1, equals 0 0.1. We have the temperature at the inlet equal to 36 degrees Celsius. We have the velocity at the inlet equal to 10 meters per second. And then we are going to have the quality of the exit, x2, equal to 0. So we're looking for three things here. We're looking for the mass flow rate, which is some number in kilograms per second. We're looking for the velocity at the exit here, V2, some number in meters per second. And then we're looking for that heat transfer, Q dot, and it will be some number in kilowatts. And I almost forgot, we actually do have the P2 here equal to nine bar. We are going to need that. So we'll start with part A. So part A is asking for the mass flow rate. So to find the mass flow rate, I'm going to use this equation that everyone knows from sixth grade, hopefully, is that density equals mass divided by volume, right? Density equals mass divided by volume. If I look at this on a per unit rate basis, so instead of mass, instead of bulk mass, I look at it as a flow rate or a, or a mass flow rate. We have M dot, and conversely, you also have to have your V dot for volumetric flow rate. Now, we have kilograms per second on top and cubic meters per second on the bottom. But what we could do is we could actually replace that volumetric flow rate with the velocity times, let me fix that up a little bit, with the velocity times the area, right? And now we have uh, meters per second times square meters, and you have cubic meters per second once again equivalent to the volumetric, volumetric flow rate. Now, I could also replace this area here with the area of a circular pipe, and that's going to be pi d squared over 4. And now, if we take this density, density, as you may or may not know, just by looking at the units of uh, mass divided by volume of kilograms per cubic meter, the reciprocal, the reciprocal of that is actually going to be the specific volume. So we can say that 1 divided by the specific volume equals this whole mass on the right of mass flow rate divided by volume times uh, pi d squared diameter squared over 4. And now all these are things that we have or can obtain from the information that we have at, say, at the inlet here. So let's first of all solve for what we're looking for here, which is the mass flow rate. So we'll multiply this out and rearrange. And when you do, you'll have that the mass flow rate equals the uh, volume, or sorry, sorry, the uh, velocity times the area divided by the volume, the specific volume. So now we can plug in what we have. So we'll have that m dot equals, well, what's your velocity? Your velocity is 10 meters per second. I'm going to keep the units here for some dimensional analysis. So we'll have 10 meters per second times pi d05 meters squared divide that by four and we'll close the parenthesis and we're going to divide that by 
our unowned specific volume. So we need to find our specific volume. So we have the x1 equals 0.1, t1 equals 36c. So let's go ahead to our table A10, the properties of saturated refrigerant R134A. So if we have uh, t equals 36 degrees right over here, and we have a quality of 0.1, and we're looking for the specific volume. So the specific volume is going to be somewhere between these two numbers here. And the formula for that is going to be that V1 equals VG, sorry, VF rather, VF, the volumetric, the specific volume of the saturated liquid plus the quality times the difference of the two. So we'll have uh, VG minus VF. Plug in what we have here. We have V1 equals VF is going to be point. 859 times 10 to the negative third, as indicated uh, up top right here. So we'll have that plus our quality, our quality, if you recall, 0 0.1 times the difference of the two here. So we have 0 0.0223 minus 0 0.859 times 10 to the negative third. And if you plug that into your calculator, you should have the specific volume at 1 equals 0 0.003. And I'm just going to have a little bit more accuracy here. 0 0.0030031 cubic meters per kilogram. And now if we plug that into our formula here, we'll have all this stuff. Just plug this into your calculator for your mass flow rate here, and you'll have that m dot equals 6.538. And let's see if we did this right to get our units to match up. So if we have a uh, meter here and meter squared here, you're going to have meters cubed up top. So we can cross those out there because you have a cubic meters on the bottom. Now this um, second here is going to drop down to the bottom. This kilogram is going to want to go to the top because it's a denominator and a denominator. So you're going to be left with kilograms per second. So we'll have kilograms per second, which is in fact going to be the unit we're looking for. So no more conversions needed there. And that's your answer to part A. And now for part B, we're looking for the velocity of the refrigerant at the exit in meters per second. So why not use the same exact formula that we used over here, um, except this time we'll solve for the velocity. A reason being that I'm going to do this is the mass flow rate is conserved between m.1 and m.2 because we have a single inlet, single exit control volume. So what comes in also comes out. So uh, we know that this is a constant between the two variables. So we'll set this up and say that 1 divided by the specific volume at state 2, which is not conserved, equals your mass flow rate, which is conserved, divided by our target here, which is your exit velocity at state 2 times the area, which in this case is conserved because we do have a, a, a horizontal pipe that has a inside diameter of 0 0.05. So we'll have uh, pi times, we'll just say d for now, d squared over 4. So pi d squared over 4. And we'll plug in what we have here. But first, actually, we'll solve for that velocity. So if we solve for the velocity, we're going to have that v2 equals the mass flow rate times the uh, specific volume, and we're going to divide that by the area of pi d squared over 4. We'll put some parentheses around that. So now let's plug in what we have. So if we have that the velocity at 2 equals the mass flow rate of 6.538 kilograms per second that we solved from part A, uh, times the uh, specific volume at 2. So specific volume at 2, we have 9 bar and a quality of zero. So we have a specific volume of the saturated liquid here of 0.8576, divide that by 1000 according to the table here. And so I just filled that in right here. And now we're going to divide all of that by our area, which again is pi d squared over four. Now just plug this in your calculator and you'll find that the velocity at state two equals 2.856. 2.856 unit is going to be meters per second, and that is going to be 
because your kilograms and kilograms cancel out. You have a meter squared on the bottom, which is going to completely disappear, and that's going to get rid of your cubic function there, and you're left with meters on the top and seconds on the bottom. And last but not least, let's use our energy balance equation to find our heat transfer. So recall the energy balance equation is 0 equals Q minus W plus M dot times it's gonna be what comes in minus what comes out. And we're going to add all of our different energies together here. So we're going to have uh, our enthalpies. We're going to have our velocities. And we're going to have our potential energy, which is G times Z1 minus Z2. So we have our zero equals our heat transfer minus our power plus our mass flow rate time, times this whole thing here is going to be the summation of all of our energies. We have our difference in enthalpies here. We have our uh, difference in kinetic energy here, which actually should be a subtraction symbol here. And we're going to have our, we're going to add our potential energy here. So this is a horizontal pipe. So right off the bat, we can get rid of our potential energy here because there's no height difference. It's a straight horizontal pipe. Also, we don't really have a motor here. We have no shaft producing power, no turbines, so we can get rid of our power function as well. So now I just went ahead and cleaned this up and, le and this is what we're left with. So now we're going to figure out what we have here. So we have zero equals what we're looking for. Our target is our heat transfer plus 6.538 kilograms per second is our mass flow rate here times and then now we're going to be looking for our enthalpies so our enthalpy at our inlet is going to be a function of 36 degrees celsius in 0.1 uh, of equality so let's turn to table a10 and we'll have similarly that uh, as the specific volume we'll have the h1 equals hf plus x hg minus hf which is of course the enthalpy of a saturated liquid and enthalpy of a saturated vapor um, and we're looking at 36 degrees and 0.1 so we'll have h1 equals our hf and what is our hf well at 36 degrees we have an hf of 100.25 kilojoules per kilogram we have our quality of 0.1 times hg minus hf so we have an hg or a uh, saturated vapor enthalpy of 166.15 or sorry uh 266.40 and then we have our saturated liquid of 100.25 you could cleverly figure out that hfg is already given to us which is the difference between the two being 166.15 so we have 166.15 and uh, if you plug this into your calculator you'll find that H1 equals 116.865 kilojoules per kilogram. So now with H1 in our equation, we're going to look for H2. So to find H2, we have 9 bar and a quality of 0. We will turn to table A11 once again, go to 9 bar, and go to our HF, and we can read it out just as it is, and that's going to be 99.56. So we'll fill that out here. Minus... 99.56 and our unit is kilojoules per kilogram given by that table and now we're going to have to add our and i'm going to start this on a new line just to keep things kind of neat here uh, we're going to have to add our velocities so we have v1 is a vo velocity of 10 meters per second squared and we're going to subtract our v2 which is going to be calculated from Part B as 2.856, 2.856 meters per second, and we're going to close this up and square it, and we're going to divide all of that by 2. Now, before I just plug this into my calculator and solve for our heat transfer, you have to notice that you have uh, inconsistent uh, unit analysis here. Up, up top here in our enthalpies, we have kilojoules per kilogram and we're trying to add meter squared per second squared right because you're going to square this meter per meter per second for the velocity so let's take a look what we have here so if we have a kilojoule per kilogram what are you actually dealing with well a joule is the unit of work 
and we know that work is force times distance, so we'll pull that kilo unit out, and a joule is simply a newton meter, and divide that by your kilogram. All I'm doing here is just rewriting, and now we're going to rewrite what's a newton. Newton, A newton is mass times acceleration, which is a, pull that kilo out first, is going to be a kilogram meter, we can square it because we already have a meter in there, per second squared. I'll put that kilogram in front though. And now we can cross out our kilogram units here and you're left with a kilo meter squared per second squared, which is not equal to what you have in your velocity, which is just meter squared per second squared. So you actually have to add a conversion factor in here by either multiplying your specific enthalpies by 1000 to get rid of that kilo prefix or by dividing your velocities by 1000 to add that kilo prefix. So we're just going to do that here. We'll add a conversion factor of 1000. So we'll just divide this by 1000. And now this should give us get rid of our kilo prefix. So now we can go ahead and close our bracket here. Plug all this into our calculator. And when you do, you're going to find that your heat transfer, and I'll write it down here. Your heat transfer equals negative 113. 0.44 kilowatts and because it's negative we know that the it the heat transfer is going to be from the r134a to the surroundings and that is your answer to part c